live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. There are calls for greater oversight at Ashley, with a recent inmate sharing the horrors he experienced there. It follows the centre's rolling lockdowns being highlighted in a report to the UN Committee Against Torture. Our shame on the international stage. But the youth minister says recent Ashley lockdowns highlighted by the UN are a product of short staffing. It is not punishment um, of those young people. It's simply what's needed to be adopted to keep them and the staff in Ashley safe. The government still plans to close the youth detention centre in 2024, despite heavy criticism. A recent Ashley inmate tells Seven Tasmania News life at the centre is invasive from the minute you arrive. Obviously, they do strip searches when you first go in there. Well, they don't even need a strip search there because you get strip searched in the main centre. The strip searches they do up there are something else. Let's just say that. Well, you know. Jack spent his teenage years in and out of Ashley. On his last visit a year and a half ago, he says mistreatment was everywhere. At least, you know, 15 things weren't by the book. Things like strip searches, just normal things like the workers is very little, yeah. Everything you could think of, it'd be worse. The Commission of Inquiry heard there are several areas in the centre that aren't picked up by CCTV. Advocates say if the centre is going to remain open, much more transparency is required. The reality is where there are black spots, uh, we don't know what's happening in there. And you know, we, we don't have those body-worn cameras that other states have as well that would completely eliminate the risk of there being black spots. Also calling for CCTV to collect audio. The minister says these are among options that have been put forward by an external review of surveillance at Ashley. The department is considering um, that work at the moment and provide advice to government in due course. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Police are close to a new pay deal with an in-principle agreement reached with the state government. A wage rise of 9.5% over three years is accompanied with better conditions and greater allowances. The Police Association of Tasmania says that was favoured over cost of living bonuses. We've actually directed those funds to those critical areas, which is our 24-hour police stations and also our most remote police stations as well. Focusing on the areas that the Police Association of Tasmania uh, want us to focus on, and that is the areas of recruitment, uh, retention, uh, safety and well-being of officers right across Tasmania. Association leadership will now liaise with members before the deal is put to them for a vote. Labor is calling on the state government to fulfil its commitment to open more beds at the Royal Hobart Hospital. In 2018, then Premier Will Hodgman promised 250 new beds would open in the next term of During government. During estimates, uh, just this year, we asked the question about how many of these beds have been delivered by this government, and their answer was 130. Premier Jeremy Rockcliffe defended their record, saying Tasmania had 2.75 beds per thousand people, well above the national average. Well, locally again now, and four Tasmanians convicted of manslaughter following the trial of Bernie father Bobby Medcraft has spent their first night behind bars since being found guilty. But their sentences are on hold after the Defence Council threw a curveball before the court. Sentencing submissions after a seven-week-long trial has commenced. For the first time, the four sat in court, now guilty of the manslaughter of 23-year-old Bobby Medcraft. A quarter of the jury voluntarily returned to the court today to hear out the trial to its full conclusion. Crucial to the whole case has been the claim the death occurred as a result of self-defence. Crown Prosecutor Jack Shapiro opened submissions, stating, Mr Sheehan struck the deceased with a sword in circumstances that make it manslaughter. And, in relation to the other three, they entered into an unlawful common purpose. The prosecution also rejecting that there was any element of self-defence, arguing the victim was on the ground in the moments leading up to the fatal sword chop. But contrary to the prosecution, Mr Sheen's defence asked Justice Pearce to find the blow was struck when Mr Medcraft was up and moving. Mr Sheen's defence lawyer stressed his client is extremely remorseful for what happened. 
Sentencing will be delayed until next month, one of the factors due to the presentation of a report by a lawyer defending Kelsey Ford. Given this, the fate of all four now hangs in the balance until December 5. McKenna Bailey, 7 Tasmania News. The Mount Lyell copper mine has struck gold despite no reopening date in sight. Owners Copper Mines of Tasmania has been provided $2.3 million by the state government to protect and improve infrastructure. The funds are the remaining part of a 2017 assistance package. New Century Resources is currently studying the mine's feasibility with a purchase decision to be made next year. The future of the controversial Macquarie Point site has been thrown into the spotlight at a public meeting in Hobart. A proposed new stadium development at the location continues to divide opinions among political leaders and community members. Dominating conversation in the chamber and on the streets, hundreds opposed to a new stadium were ready to make it known. And who is against the stadium, very clearly? It's been the buzzword on the lips of decision makers with Macquarie Point, the location selected for the multi-million dollar facility. It's not even a Tasmanian idea, it's the AFL's idea, the same AFL that spent the last 25 years destroying Tassie grassroots footy. Hosted by Planning Matters Alliance Tasmania, the public meeting was a chance to discuss the planning process, some arguing the state governments bungled the project. In my opinion, the stadium does not fit either spatially or anywhere within the master plan. But those backing in the development weren't taking it lightly, urging those against the idea to consider all the facts. My uh, background is in the law and I say let's look at all the evidence before you decide one way or another. When you look at what it's going to do for the uh, city itself and the community itself, you've got to say it is only going to be a plus. There's still no official word on when a decision will be handed down on the AFL licence. But league boss Gillan McLaughlin is set to face those tough questions when he arrives in Hobart on Friday to attend a corporate conference. Just in... Uh building the stadium. We're looking at about 4,200 jobs and 300 million in economic activity over the three years. How quickly this grand plan can become a reality remains unclear, with prominent business owners among those welcoming the chance to get it done. Before and after a game, people go out, have a drink, have a meal, walk to the footy, then on the way back, they walk back into the city and just create a bit of revenue and a bit of activity in the area. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian students now have access to a world of fantasy, history, science and more with the launch of a statewide e-book service. 60,000 students will gain access to public library books on their devices using the Sora app. This is a great leveller. It means that wherever you are in the state, provided you can log on to the Sora app, you can actually access the same books. In school or at home, on the bus, anywhere, uh, and not have to remember to return it, not have to worry if the, if the, the, the dog ate it or uh, it got stuck under the couch. Tasmania is the first state to offer an e-book platform to all students in government schools. A number of Tasmanian landmarks are turning purple this week to raise awareness for pancreatic cancer. Hobart's Crown Plaza Hotel and a number of Hobart City Council landmarks are donning the colour this week in support of the National Pancreatic Cancer Foundation. The organisation says more research is desperately needed with death rates from the disease still high. We're still looking at 12% five-year survival for people affected by pancreatic cancer and on average from diagnosis to death is about five months. The campaign coincides with World Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Day, which is tomorrow. More than 1,000 students have gathered for the 24 Carat Festival, aimed at promoting healthy eating and living. Organisers say it's never been more important to promote fresh fruit and veggies, even as climate change and the soaring cost of inflation impact availability. All singing, all dancing, all fun. More than 1,300 of Tasmania's youngest inhabitants today getting a lesson in positivity. Everyone's just smiling, big faces. It's really good to see. Good for your mental health and your physical health because 
if you're happy in your mind, you just think better. Not even the weather could halt the annual 24 carat event. The program helping students from 17 local schools get healthy, active and eating right. By making growing our own food part of our lifestyle, we not only live better, we have a more enjoyable life. Access to fresh produce, an increasing challenge for many. The impact of climate change, which is a focus of this year's program, and the worldwide inflation crisis, ingredients in a recipe for disaster. People are struggling to buy the healthy food. It costs more. You'd be amazed how many times you meet a child who's never tasted a strawberry. Since beginning in 2014, thousands of children have taken part. The results starting to show at many family tables. Parents will report that their child has decided to grow some things in the backyard and then show, is showing them how to prepare these beautiful dishes. The message still getting through. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. It's very positive. It's been really good to see people do that. John Hunt. <laughs> 7 Tasmania News. Staff shortages across the state's child health and parenting service are being called into question again. This time, the nursing industry airing its grievances. The ANMF today have um, raised concerns in relation to the delays and lack of action in relation to the workload concerns and service concerns. That comes on the back of a grievance that was raised on behalf of members after local Step 1 grievances across the state in August. The Australian Nursing and Midwifery Federation says staff shortages are putting extra pressure on nurses in the sector, while a number of children also missing essential developmental checks. As a result, the Federation is considering escalating the issue to the Tasmanian Industrial Commission following three specialist panel meetings with no outcomes. The first complete overhaul of Launceston's Country Club golf course is driving ahead, with the first of 18 new holes now under construction. The Makeovers Mastermind has worked with some of the sport's biggest names and wants to put his touch on the $10 million project. Today, it's the diggers working on their swing, but soon it'll be golfers when the Country Club's revamp comes to life. It's a nice course. Uh, what we're doing is improving it. Robin Gibson is the genius behind the greens, having worked with the likes of Greg Norman and Jack Nicholas. Now he's tailoring a course suitable for pros, beginners and those just having a bad day. We're pinching in uh, certain sections where the bigger hitter, he's going to have a bit more difficulty, but make it very playable for everybody. Some of the mastery is in the engineering, with the design reducing the chance of frosty fairways and waterlogged greens, but the hole-in-one is visual. What we're really after is a, is a beautiful parkland with, with golf as a complement to the parkland. Where I'm standing here is where golfers will tee off for this hole, and although it's a construction site today, it'll look a lot more like a golf course when the grass goes down early next year. The project will cost upwards of $10 million and is the first complete overhaul of the course since it opened 40 years ago. Part of the need to upgrade are improvements in golf equipment. We're extending the tees farther back because of the driving technology on your drivers. Everybody's hitting it a lot farther. The course is reduced to nine holes while construction takes place before all 18 are ready to play in around three years' time. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. Aged care residents in the state's northwest have been given a fresh set of wills with the delivery of a brand new wheelchair accessible bus. The Port Sorrell community banded together in a mammoth fundraising effort, all in a bid to keep locals connected with their community. From old to new, Rubicon Grove's fresh new wheels are set to give residents with limited mobility better access to their community. It's been a labour of love for Port Sorrell's Lions Club, who ponied up $20,000 of the total cost to help buy the new van. A lot of book sales, uh, a lot of sausages cooked, um, a lot of uh, stuff sold through our, um, through our uh, shop up at the uh, recycle centre. The facility's previous ride didn't have wheelchair accessibility, making it harder for some residents to get out and about. Now everyone will be able to participate in community life. They go to lunches, they go to concerts, they, we have a soup and sandwich day that they come to that. Rubicon Grove's auxiliary works to deliver more home comforts to the facility, adding $10,000 to the pot. For Deirdre, it was a no-brainer. We've been pushing it for years and finally it's there. <laughs> 
OneCare says providing equal access to transport will be life-changing for its wheelchair-using residents. Community connection is a really important part of uh, providing aged care services and so uh, this bus enables that to happen. We're just so lucky to have a facility such as this in our community. Um, there are a lot of local people here, um, not far down the track. Some of us may be here. Fueling a better quality of life. Annie Green, 7 Tasmania News. Skyrocketing living costs are being blamed for a surge in Tasmanians reaching out to charities as the St Vincent de Paul Society launches its annual Christmas appeal. The organisation says it needs to raise a quarter of a million dollars to support those in need over the festive season. There's an increasing sense of anxiety as fuel bills increase, food, energy prices, they're not contemplating a Christmas full of cheer. We worry a lot about you know, how they're going to survive and stuff. So having Vinnie's support my sister and my nephews and my niece is a massive relief to us. Donations can be made online in Vinnie's shops and at IGA stores. And Guide Dogs Tasmania has taken to the streets in a bid to raise funds for its training programs. Hobart's Elizabeth Street Mall was one of several locations in the CBD turning orange today for the organisation's annual street appeal. The aim to raise $10,000 which will go towards the expensive exercise of training puppies. It costs $50,000 to raise and train a guide dog or assistance dog here in Guide Dogs Tasmania. Anyone who missed their chance today can donate through the Guide Dogs website. Good evening. WBBL finals are looking more and more likely for the Hurricanes. Mignon Dupria headlined with the bat and out in the field, ending the Stars innings with a superb catch. The Hurricanes winning by 38 runs. Under the mountains of the northwest, Lizelle Lee looked to the sky, smashing a six off the first legal ball of the day. Over the rope for six. It made for a happy Hurricanes, especially when import Mignon Dupria came to the crease. Ball, punched into the covers and it beats the cover. Turning yesterday's three run innings into an unbeaten half century. We'll go big here. Certainly did. Over mid off. Got a good piece of that. Pounds it over the rope for six. The bar was kept busy at La Trobe as the Canes reached a respectable 152. When Melbourne went in, it took just six balls for the first star to fade. Straight to cover. And as a wicket. The highlight coming when Amy Smith snared a scalp on her 18th birthday. Oh, that's gone straight through. Well bowled, Smith. Then the chase was on. Melbourne needing 70 runs from the last five overs. Dupria put her body in the firing line, her ankle acting as a shield. Sa saved the runs there, but it would hurt. Then a breakthrough. That swung over the top of cover. No, it's not. It didn't carry. A courageous catch sealing the win and boosting the team's finals hopes. Takes a beauty. Oh, found a little bit of energy. The dive was outstanding. Dupria again the star of the show. Tasmania's team winning by a convincing 38 runs. Finals now on the agenda. Meanwhile, the Tigers are ruining Hobart's recent wet spell and its impact on their Sheffield Shield season. Rain costing Tasmania's chances of a win against Victoria earlier this month and New South Wales yesterday. Their focus is now back on the Marsh Cup, with the Tigers facing the Blues at Blunston Arena tomorrow. Matthew Wade will return to the one-day side with the coach pleased with who he has to choose from. Whether it's the top of the order or, or through the middle, um, we've got a, a wonderful bowling unit as well. So pretty excited by, uh, by what might roll out tomorrow. Peter Siddle has also been selected for the game, which begins at 11am. Big man Clint Steindl has added another two years to his Jack Jumpers career, penning a deal with the club until the end of the 2025 season. The announcement has come in a good week for the captain, who is preparing to return to the floor, uh, continuing to overcome a leg injury. The forward is hoping he'll score some minutes on Friday night after a 10-day break for the squad. No, I'm ready to go mentally, physically. Um, this past week um, has been great. Uh, moving freely, feel strong, feel confident. We want to get up to Lonnie and put on a good show and make sure we've got a good fight and they'll certainly bring that out in us because that's how they play. Tasmania will face off against the Breakers under lights at the Launceston Silverdome on Friday night. Tip-off is at 7.30.
Good evening. Another cool day across the state. Hobart 13 and the Northern Centre 16, but the Southerlies made it feel a bit colder than that. Temperatures sat between 3 and 6 below average. Low head 16 today. Smithton, Friendly Beaches, Strawn and King Island all 15. Flinders Islands and Helens and Bushy Park 14. Grove a top of 13. A field of stratocumulus cloud moved over from the south today. A light shower or two in all that. Fresh snow 2 to 800 metres this morning. A cloud band extends across the central mainland from the northwest. Active thunderstorms over the top end and cooler low-level cloud over the Bight and southeast. Tomorrow a high approaches Tasmania with a low forming to the south of WA along with a front or two there. Winds southwesterly at 10 to 20 knots but more westerly through Bass Strait. Winds at 5 to 15 knots over the lakes. Moderate flood warning has been issued for the Macquarie River. Minor warnings for the Meander and South Esk. A flood warning also for the Coal River. Tomorrow and 16 for Hobart, a possible shower. Shower for Signet, 17 the top and 18 the high for New Norfolk. Launceston reaching for 19 tomorrow and partly cloudy. Devonport 18, a top of 16 for Campbelltown. Burnie tomorrow, 17 degrees and partly cloudy. An early shower for Strawn, 16 the maximum. Smithton cloudy and a top of 19 degrees. 17 for St Helens and partly cloudy. Swansea 16, Fingal maybe a late shower and 15 the maximum. UV reaching a very high 9 tomorrow. Fine and partly cloudy on Friday. The chance of a shower over parts of the north. A fine start to Saturday until rain develops over the far northwest in the afternoon before extending statewide. And on Sunday, rain tending to showers before easing later in the day. A showery 20 in Perth. Sunny weather for Adelaide. A shower or two on the way for Melbourne. Sunny conditions forecast for Sydney and Brisbane. Mostly cloudy. 11 right now in Hobart. 12 in Launceston. Partly cloudy in Devonport and 13. Not the best day, Kim, but I did manage to walk in the park. And while I was there, I was wondering, why is it that a frisbee becomes bigger the closer it gets? And then it hit me. Oh, gee, you've been back two days. and <laughs> We've got that bad already. Thank you, Murph. See you tomorrow for another doozy. That's all we have time for tonight. Good night.